Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, Architect at Today we're going to be taking a look at our second part in IoT Edge modules. So last time we looked at IoT Hub modules, we talked about the workflow to get an IoT module on there. And basically, just to review what that looks like, we have a container registry where we've pushed an image from a dev environment or through a CI CD pipeline into a container registry. And that's basically done by Docker push. And now it's out there in the registry. Then we push the manifest up to IoT Hub. And then IoT Hub informs the agent to pull that image. And so the agent is going to interact with a Docker instance on the VM where it's running or the physical machine where it's running on premise. And it's going to pull the image from the container registry and deploy it as a module on the IoT Edge device. And once it's up and running, it's running as a Docker container in that context, and it's ready to do whatever work you've designated for that particular module. Now that's the workflow for getting a container onto a IoT Edge instance. Today, I want to look at the messaging side of things, and that's like building one of those. If you recall back from our first video that we did on this, we talked about a couple of different kinds of things you can do with the modules that you deploy to IoT Edge. And one of those is provide gateways. And there's two kinds of gateways that you can use. There's a translation gateway and then there's a transparent gateway. Now the translation gateways are those kind of gateways that we can have protocol transformation. Say so a device can't talk to IoT Hub directly, but what it can do is send messages of some kind. And then a module can take those messages, do some transformations on them, and then put them onto some kind of payload that IoT Hub can understand. And that's what I'm going to be demoing today. A transparent gateway allows the device to talk directly to the um, Azure IoT Edge, but it can act as a filter. So the module that I'm going to be looking at today is kind of both a translation gateway as well as a filter module, kind of combined as a single module, but you could really tease those apart and make two different modules. But the, the basic principle is going to be transparent here once we see the how this actually works. So once the module is running in an IoT Edge, which is represented by this box here, what we can then do is have this module connect to that. So this is going to expose some kind of point on the Azure IoT Edge. It's a network endpoint that this device can talk to. Now that's going to be basically a protocol that is not supported by IoT Hub, but this device can actually use. So this device is going to send some kind of message over to that module. Now this module is going to then do processing on that data. Now it can receive that data. And it's going to process that data. It's going to do something to it like filter it. And once it's done filtering it and applying some logic to it, then it's going to encapsulate that into a message format that the IoT Hub can understand. But the way that modules communicate with IoT Hub is not directly, rather they go through the Hub agent that is going to be running on the IoT Edge. So it's going to send a message up to the IoT Hub as a new message that has been encapsulated from whatever data it got here from the device. And then the Hub is then going to have routing rules, and those routing rules will then take this message and do something with it. It can either route it to another module or it can route it up to the Azure IoT Hub in this case. And that is what we're gonna see happen today in our demo. So it's basically just going to take that and forward it upstream to the Azure IoT Hub. And once it's on the Azure IoT Hub, you can do anything that we've seen already with the Azure IoT Hub. And that is multifaceted. Again, you can connect that up to service bus, event grids, you can write it to storage, you can persist it. There's any number of things you can do with that. And we've looked at a lot of those workloads already. But the main thing that we want to look at today is the code that goes into making this module happen. So I want to look at the kind of proxy code that this is going to provide the translation and the filtering, and then look at the routes that I'm going to be putting into this module to allow it to send the data up to the hub. And then we'll just kind of see the data flow from the device, a device simulator, which I'm going to be running through the module, see it encapsulate it, send it up to the hub, and then onto IoT Hub, just like we see here in this flow on the screen right now. So today I wanna to be taking a look at the code that is going to be creating my translation gateway. Now, this would apply to any platform. I'm looking at Node.js in particular here, but you're gonna see the basic same kind of construction, uh, whether using Java, .NET Core, or whatever you might be using. 
In this case, I'm using app, uh, I'm using Node.js and I'm using Express. And this is what I'm using for HTTP endpoints. And that's kind of the de facto standard for HTTP based applications in Node.js, but I'm doing it in an unencrypted way. So the assumption is here is that my device can only send HTTP messages and I just need to and I need to grab those messages and encapsulate them in something that IoT Hub can understand. And I'm going to also going to apply some logic to it. So my simulation is basically just HTTP messages, grab those, and then do something with it. So that this is just um, Node.js code here for Express, which is un unconventional, just really basic uh, grabbing a post and then just saying, okay, I got it. And then this is where the module client code comes in here. And this is basically constructing a module client from the environment. So what the agent does on the edge is it populates the modules with some variables that it can read. And these are Docker containers, so they're exposed as variables. And the module is intelligent enough to read those variables from the edge to get the configuration data it needs. It needs to know what the hub's endpoint is and that needs to know its credentials. And that agent provides those and I don't have to orchestrate that. So if I was to run this outside of an edge context, it would probably crash and burn. But in any case, that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm telling it what transport to use, which I just basically set up here, I'm using MQTT, but any of the other transports that you can use for device modules uh, would be uh, appropriate here, HTTP or AMQP, what have you. Um, this one is basically creating the client from the from the the transport that I pass in, and there is the actual client that I'm going to be using. And I'm basically just using this to wire up some uh, some events here for errors, and then uh, opening on open. You know, once it's connected, this event fires, and then I'm I'm, I'm uh, setting a variable that has some context outside of this uh, initialization. Uh, method right here, which is a variable that I need uh, in order to do the logic that I'm going to be talking about on here. Because up here, once I receive a message from the uh, device, uh, I need somewhere to encapsulate that message and do the translation. So that's why I have that variable set right there. And then it's basically just saying, here's the request. The request body is the object. So that's basically JSON data. Here's the client, uh, my client module and then I'm going to then do something, and that's kind of down here, which is the logic. And so I'm doing a filter message and basically taking the client and the message. So the client is the client for the IoT Edge, and then the message is what came in off of the HTTP, and then I'm going to do something with that. And so here it's just applying some logic. Uh, received a message, it logs the message. Here it's saying, hey, is the temperature, is basically, is, is, it, is there an object? Uh, checks the temperature, is the uh, that property on the object, and then is it greater than 20? If it's 20, I'm going to send it to IoT Hub. If not, I'm going to just kind of ignore it because I don't want, I don't need to send those. So that's just kind of an arbitrary uh, threshold. I log something and then I put something back on the output right here. And it's just basically saying, log this message uh, as an event. Here's the message just basically taking the, 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 the JavaScript object and then putting it back on the the edge hub, which is a, a, the a hub agent that's local as a, a new message. And it's putting it on this particular uh, queue right here, this particular topic. So that's the code for it. So what happens after that is the, basically what's defined inside of my template down here. So last time we looked at this, we basically looked at this from the angle of just building one of these and deploying it. But the, the real magic of this is uh, kind of in the configuration of A, the module, and then some routes. And we'll look at both of these now. So the module, we looked at how to deploy the image right here. Now to expose the endpoint, I basically had to add in this port binding. So if you wanted to do a translation module and you wanted to have a port that was exposed to the network, you need to have the startup configuration uh, for this port binding right here. So it's you know binding uh, port 8080. And then also on the Docker file, I had to add this exposed right here, 8080 on TCP, uh, in order to map the external port to the Docker uh, image uh, on the Docker container when it starts. So I had to add that. And once that's there, you kind of connect uh, the external exposure into whatever the Docker container is going to be running. And so that allows that, that traffic to flow uh, from whatever the external IP address of the 
uh, the virtual machine or the physical machine running the edge and then into the container so it can actually listen for that. So you would need to do that for any protocol, regardless of a, if it's HTTP or any other thing that might be inside of your translation module, or if you're doing something else like just providing a service to uh, devices, maybe a caching service like Redis or a database service or something like that. But in any case, that's why I did that. So the other thing that you need to set up then is routes. And these routes are really you know, what that you're going to be using for sending messages from one uh, module to another. And so this one is basically looking for outputs, any output, and sending it upstream. So this is kind of a generic route that basically takes a input uh, output from any module, uh, output star, and then sends it up to upstream, which is basically the IoT hub. So anything that emits a message here uh, inside of my message that any output, doesn't matter what I call it, that I can send it upstream. Now I can change this to up, output one or whatever, and it will only listen for output one and send that to upstream. And if I wanted to do other outputs, I could do that, but it's basically just going to be listening for output one. And if I did the route like that, but if I just listen to star all outputs, I'm going to be sending to upstream, which is the IOT hub, or if you're doing a, a more of a, a cascading approach where you have multiple layers of IOT edges and you want to send from one IOT edge to another, uh, that can also happen in this case as well. And which in some cases that might be appropriate if you want to have an edge that is kind of more of the actual edge that is sitting more on the external network. And you had a lot of devices that any one given edge is going to be managing or kind of devices, which in a large device, large deployment might not be a bad idea. If you have tens or tens of thousands of devices, you might need multiple IOT edges. And the way that IOT edge architecture allows you to do is have layers of edge devices so that you kind of have um, a layered approach. And then you have one that's managing a subset of devices and another one's managing another subset of devices. But regardless, upstream is basically just going to forward this message onto whatever this IoT edges uh, upstream might be. It could be another IoT edge and it could be the IoT hub itself. In this case, it's going to be the IoT hub. So once that's deployed, basically what that does is it creates the module, exposes the port, and then it allows the device to connect to the IoT edge. It filters the message, encapsulates it, then forwards it on up to the IoT hub. So to build this, we've looked at how to do that. You just basically right click and build and push, uh, and that's going to send the message uh, to uh, the, send the payload up to the container registry, and it's going to put the image out there. And then I can deploy this right here to my hub using a deployment. And that's basically just going to take the output from that, the config file, which we looked at that in our last video. And then that takes the uh, module, deploys it uh, to the IoT edge. And once you have that done, then you should be up and running. So down here, I have both of my modules running and, um, and I have, this, uh, is my IoT edge right here. This is the actual SSH tunnel into the, the edge appliance. And if I do a Docker PS dash a, we're going to be able to see that the module is up and running and, uh, the module is running on that. And, uh, you can see that I have port mappings here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, uh, port mappings and everything is up and running based on that configuration that we just looked at. And this is my module that's currently uh, operational as of right now. So if I do Docker um, logs uh, on my module, you can see where I've been playing with this a little bit. Um, you can see that it's receiving messages you know, from some device and uh, I just called it camera one or whatever. And it's listening on port 8080 as we saw when we did Docker uh, PS-A. And that's looking for uh, listening on this particular um, port right here, which we can see is the case. So I know that everything is running here. And so now to uh, make this work, I need to start my device uh, simulation. And what we should see is something that looks like output like this, uh, where we have uh, the messages coming in. It's not always going to queue the message. It's only going to uh, queue messages that have a, a threshold of higher than 21 because the temperature is higher than 20 uh, is going to be the message that I care about. So let's go ahead and start this um, device simulator up right here. And so 
And uh, my device simulator is just a simple Node.js app. And I am running this on a local context. It's just a simulated device. I don't have a physical device here. And if I just do Node, I wrote this one in Node. It's just basically just going to emit events in this case. And so it's sending those on to the, uh, the edge. So every five seconds, it's sending a new uh, message and basically generating a temperature uh, randomly. And so the ones that are going to be above 23 or above 20, 23 in this case, are the ones I'm going to be expecting to show up on my IoT edge and uh, into my uh, module here. So let's do a Docker PS-A and see if I've got um, log, sorry, and see if I've got some uh, messages here that we should see. There's that 23 that we just saw, and that is the one that's going to be queuing the messages up to the IoT hub. So to validate that those are getting sent, I want to go listen and let's go uh, look at the IoT hub and then see how things look there. So to see the output from this, I'm just going to connect to the queue that is the output side of this that is after the messages have been sent back to the hub from the actual edge device. They're forwarded to a service bus queue, which is this one right here. I'm just going to create a listener on this and uh, go ahead and start this guy up. And so we have a message here and it's going to start receiving messages as they come off of that particular device. And then they're going to go back to the IoT edge. They're going to be filtered and then forwarded to the edge hub. And then that's going to forward them on to the IoT hub. And then the IoT hub sends them to the service bus right here. And then that's basically what we're listening for. So uh, let's come over here to the message tab. And both of these messages should have a temperature greater than uh, 20, which is what we see here. So I see a couple of messages, just two right now, that have a temperature greater than 20. And as more messages come off of that service bus, they will be added to this particular stack here. And that allows me basically just to make sure that I have new messages that have a temperature greater than 20. So our module is doing two things. Like we saw, we it's doing a translation from HTTP to MQTT, but it's also doing filtering. And sometimes those would be separate. But in any case, we basically can receive the messages, do some translation on those messages, and then filter those messages, then forward them on to something upstream to process them further. In this case, I'm just receiving the message and then making sure that it comes through, which is what we're getting right here with these messages. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.